Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ask Jess, All Things Clutter. It's my video podcast where I answer all of your questions related to clutter and organization and, <laughs> and reducing your waste. I'm Jess Marcy. I'm a clutter coach, and I'm super excited to come to you live today with a topic that comes up all the time, and it recently just came up again, um, and that is the topic of hand-me-downs. So if you have children, you know how complicated this collection can be. It's so amazing to get great hand-me-downs from your friends and your family, but it's not as fun to store the hand-me-downs and to have your kids try on all the hand-me-downs and to spend so much time swapping out your hand-me-downs over and over again. So today I am going to share with you some tips about dealing, my thoughts on hand-me-downs and how to best deal with them, keep them decluttered and organized. If you're on live, say hello. It's so good to see you guys live. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here with me. All right, so diving into hand-me-downs. Thinking about hand-me-downs really starts with thinking about your children's clothing. I've been a mom for 13 years now, and I definitely have had a path when it comes to dealing with my kids' clothing. At first, I was so happy to get all of the clothing all the time. It was great. I loved, I loved that whole process of getting clothing for my daughters that I didn't have to pay for. This was actually something pretty new to me that you could really get tons of clothing for free from family and friends. So it was great and I embraced all of it. Then I found myself in the situation where I had a second daughter and so I really wanted to save everything for her. And then I found myself in the situation where I had no space for all of these hand-me-downs. And of course, it wasn't just hand-me-down clothing. When it comes to kids, it's hand-me-down baby equipment, hand-me-down everything. So we had a home that was overrun by toddler and baby stuff and clothing for the next 10 years, right? We had, I said yes to clothing in every size. We'll take it all. It's free clothing. Of course, in retrospect, I've learned so much, especially as a professional organizer. And one of the things that I've learned that's most important is to value our life in, and the stuff in our life in terms of time instead of money. So time is a non-renewable resource. We never get our time back. Money is a renewable re resource. We always have the opportunity to make more money in the future. So when you have hand-me-downs, which is a seemingly free collection, we really wanna focus on how much time we're spending dealing with the hand-me-downs and how much space we're devoting in our homes to dealing with hand-me-downs. Now, I am not saying do not accept hand-me-downs, absolutely do accept hand-me-downs and keep hand-me-downs, but let's just put a little bit, some parameters around hand-me-downs. So it starts really with the clothing that isn't hand-me-downs, right, that your children have in their drawers. How much space do you have in your children's rooms for their clothing? That's your, your starting point. Your space, your storage space in your house is your personal parameter for how much you can store at any given time. If you want to feel organized and if you don't want to have clutter, you need to live within this space restriction. So if your child has a small dresser and a closet with hanging space, that's the amount of space that they have for clothing. Hey, Sarah! And that's how much clothing they can have at any given time. So understanding how much you can store is a really good place to start. If you're, it's also important to know, I've actually, a couple of times in the last two days, I've heard myself saying this, uh, so it must be very relevant right now. We tend to wear 10% of our clothing 90% of the time. With children, it's the same. Children do not wear all of the clothing they have. So it's important when you're thinking about what to keep and how much space you have to really focus on that 10% that they wear a lot. And kids, they grow so quickly, right? It, raise your hand in the comments if your child has grown really quickly. <laughs> 
kids grow so quickly that that 10% that they wear all the time is really changing a lot. So we want to have a lot of space in their storage to accommodate this constantly changing collection, at least until they become teenagers and they stop growing so significantly. So number one is really to understand how much space your kids have for their clothing and how much space they how much stuff they can comfortably store within that space. So it's a, probably a lot smaller than the amount of hand-me-downs you've been given. So the second space parameter that we want to think about is when we think about hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs are a collection, they're a collection of stuff in our house. And before we decide that we're going to keep all of the hand-me-downs, we want to first assess how much space we're willing to devote in our home to this particular collection. And with hand-me-downs, it's pretty easy to think of it in terms of large plastic bags that you might store them in, or large bins, or boxes. So you want to, hey Emma, you want to think really about how much space you're willing to devote to a collection of hand-me-downs. And then you want to live within that space parameter knowing that your kids are only going to probably wear 10% of what they're handed down, um, then, you know, you really, when you think about your hand-me-downs and your space, my next piece of advice is to save the best of the best. Um, what I've noticed with my children is the older they get, the less likely they are to want the style of hand-me-downs that's been given to them. We get beautiful hand-me-downs. We have a family of extended family of all girl cousins who are older than my daughters, so we get the really nice hand-me-downs, but it doesn't matter how nice they are, if they're not in you know, one of my kids' personal style, they're just not gonna wear it. And I don't think that it's right to necessarily, at this age, they're 10 and 13, force them to wear clothing that does not feel good for them. I think that they should have stuff that feels good for them. The great news, when it comes to hand-me-downs is that it's so easy to get children's clothing free or inexpensively at any point in their development. So oftentimes we hear ourselves saying that we want to, that we, we're keeping these hand-me-downs because it represents so much money that we're saving. But I'm gonna challenge that notion because it's so easy to get free clothing for kids or inexpensive clothing for kids at any point until probably their mid-teen years. So these are two really great ways that you can get free or inexpensive clothing for kids between the ages of zero and 13 or 14. Number one is to use your community. So you are connected on Facebook or through mom's groups or through your school community to a ton of parents. You are connected to parents, and these parents have just as much clothing as you have. And they also have no, generally no solid plan besides putting the clothing into the, 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 the donation bin or passing it along to cousins. They want something to do with their clothing, right? We all, raise your hand in the comments if you would love to know exactly what to do with your children's clothing when they outgrow it, right? You wanna have a plan. It's helpful for you to have a place for it to go. So if you are looking for hand-me-downs, when your kids need them, all you need to do is reach out to your community and ask them to, if they have clothing or shoes or sporting equipment or whatever in, that you're looking for in the size that you're looking for, right? So you just need to post on Facebook looking for size 2T girls winter clothing. And I guarantee that you will get a large enough response to completely outfit your child at that point in time. So <laughs> that's one easy way to get free clothing. Use your community, use your friends who already have that stuff lying around who are desperate to get it out of their house and give it to a friend, right? Raise your hand if you've gotten awesome. Drop a, uh, let's see, a little emoji in the comments if you've gotten awesome hand-me-downs from your local friends. I know that I totally have. Another incredibly good way to get inexpensive clothing and equipment 
for children is to use a local consignment, like one of those consignment sales that pops up. Yeah, M, definitely try it. <laughs> so I know in the Albany region, there's three or four huge children's consignment sales that happen twice a year. The one that's been around for the longest, the pass it, pass it on sale, pass it along sale, has been, I just actually looked at their website right before I popped on here. It has been around for 17 years. This year, they have over 700 consigners. So that's other local moms who are looking to get rid of their stuff, over 700 consigners. And they're, they have in their next sale, or in their last sale, they had over 80,000 items. So if I looked on Google, and there are different directories of local children's consignment sales. They're all over the world. They're definitely all over the United States. Local kids consignment sales are one of the best ways to get inexpensive clothing for your kids and inexpensive equipment for your kids as they're growing up. And they're also fun. It's a social activity that you can do with your friends. And just as an aside, we know that when you're socially connected and you make time, <laughs> as a busy mom, it's hard to make time to see your friends sometimes. So this is a good way to, to enhance that connection. Go to a consignment sale and go shopping there together. So just to kind of recap my thoughts about hand-me-downs, and I see we have, hey, Kelly. Oh, Sarah's been doing the Pass It On sale for 13 years. Sarah, I'm super curious if you're still finding stuff for your teenagers there, almost teenagers there. How, what's your experience with teens? Um, you can just leave a comment, if you will. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna, I'm just going to recap my points for hand-me-downs and then take any questions. Number one, figure out exactly how much space you have for your children's clothing to begin with. What, how much space do they have in their bedrooms, in drawers and closet space, for all of their clothing. So that's your number one space parameter. Number two, define the amount of space that you have in your house that you're willing to devote to a collection of hand-me-downs. Is it one bin? Is it 10 bins? How much space are you willing to devote to that collection? And then live within that space. Number three, value what you have in terms of your time and not you're not necessarily your money. Time is a non-renewable resource. You will never get that back. Money is a renewable resource. You can always make more. And in the case of kids' clothing, my <laughs> point number four, it's so easy to get free and inexpensive clothing and equipment for children. It's uh, of all of the categories of stuff in our lives, children's stuff is the absolute easiest to get for free and inexpensively. The number one place that you can go is just use your local community. Uh, use Facebook, use, there's local free groups, um, there's, you can use your school parents. There are definitely tons of people around who would love to give you their children's hand-me-downs. And the other place to look is in children's consignment sales, which happen seasonally all around the country. There are tons of them. So those, that's my thought on hand-me-downs. At this point, we keep very little in, in terms of hand-me-downs. My 13-year-old, actually, and my 10-year-old both like to shop on ThreadUp, which is a whole other option. Um, ThreadUp is an online consignment store, and they have gotten tons of great inexpensive clothing through ThreadUp. They also, because my children are shorter than other children, they get a lot of hand-me-downs directly from their friends. They just come home with clothing, and that works out really well, too. So if you have short kids, uh, maybe that's a benefit there, right? <laughs> um, so those, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts on hand-me-downs. Keep as little as possible. Value the amount that you have in terms of your time and your space, and especially with this category, not so much in terms of your money. And make sure that you're not keeping more than comfortably fits because that's just going to result in a lot of frustration. So I'm going to open it up to questions now, or and it could be related, unrelated to hand-me-downs. Um, if you guys have an idea for future Ask Jess video podcasts, please leave it in the comments. 
Um, that's how I got this idea for hand-me-downs and all of the, the different topics that I come up with. And if you love this video, make sure that you share it. Um, and I'm always here to help you out with all of your decluttering and organizing needs. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, send me a heart, and make sure that you tune in next Tuesday at 1215 for another edition of Ask Jess All Things Related to Clutter. Thanks, guys.